Hi, today we're going to talk about outdoor Newtone patio stations. In the earliest days of Newtone intercom systems, you only really had one choice for an outdoor patio station, and that was simply this. This is actually a Newtone front door entry station. You have an intercom talk and listen switch here. The recommended installation in the early days between 1957 and 1960 was if a customer wanted an outdoor backyard patio station, you would simply install another entry door station and put it outside. And while if you had an intercom system at all, say in 1959, you were definitely living the Jetsons lifestyle, a small front door entry station as a patio station was not the very best choice. What you have here basically is just a decorative grill. You have your intercom control switch here. And on the back of it, you just have a standard three and a half inch speaker cone. There is no volume adjustment built into these. There is right here a little resistor. And if you wanted greater volume out of the station, you could take the resistor and twist the leads together to bypass it. And that would increase the amount of volume that comes out of the station. But Honestly, you don't get that much sound out of a three and a half inch speaker. Here we have a page from a 1959 Newtone intercom catalog, and it says outside the home. Your outside remote station is useful in so many ways. You can speak to strangers without opening the door. You can check on children's activities while they're playing outside the house. You can use it as a night watchman while you're asleep. Grill is gold anodized, cannot rust or tarnish. And here we show an earlier style entry door station. This is a model 2005. And here we have a nice picture of a couple sunning themselves outside, sort of huddle around their little tiny Newtone entry patio station with this three and a half inch speaker cone because you probably couldn't get much further away from it than that if you were still planning on hearing it. And just for the sake of clarity, as Newtone added more models to the Newtone intercom line, they also did come up with another option or choice for an outdoor patio station. And that was this station right here. This is a model 2020B and it features an 8 inch high fidelity speaker for outdoor patio use. It's constructed with a metal frame and it has a heavy duty fiberglass cloth material as a grill. And then you have this nice gold panel here with a volume control and your intercom control. And in the center it says Newtone plus it's got the old school Newtone logo, which are two electrons circling a musical note to denote that it's electronic music because it has got vacuum tubes in it and that's electronics. In the 30 plus years that I've been doing this, I have never actually seen one of these installed in anyone's home or any in any other place. I think the problem with these were the cost. In 1962, this cost $23. You could still buy an entry door station here with its little three and a half inch speaker cone and this was only $7.50. So I'm not sure that people would want to pay nearly four times as much for this as it is for this. Another way you can look at this is this costs one quarter of the cost of the master station. So your typical master station in these days was about $85. Did you really want to spend $23 for that? No, we can go with the $7 one. It'll be all right. While all of this was going on, a change was coming. And that change actually happened a year before this catalog was printed in 1961. So what was the big change in 1961? The big change was the introduction of the model N2561-62, which was the very first solid state music intercom Newtone ever made. No more vacuum tubes, now it's got transistors in it. With the introduction of the first solid state model and the coming up of more and more solid state models, I think someone at Newtone decided we needed to have a better option for outdoor patio stations and we need to figure out a way to do it that would be simpler and easier for people and also easier for us to manufacture and so forth. So they came up with a new idea. So what was the new idea in 1961? The new idea was this, a two piece deluxe outdoor patio station set. So the two pieces consist of, here we have an aluminum grill, which has an eight inch speaker cone behind it no more this three and a half inch speaker cone stuff. And then we have a separate wall mounted patio remote control. And what they've basically done is they've taken a self-contained system, which would be 
a large station with the controls built in and they've separated it and made it into two separate pieces. By doing this, they created more options in how you could install something like this. The basic idea behind this is the eight inch speaker station can be mounted anywhere on the exterior of your house. It could be down there towards the barbecue, or it could be over there at the corner of the house near where the pool is. Or of course, you could have multiples of these if you have a really big backyard. And by moving the speaker down to the area where you want the sound, and usually mounting it up higher, because it broadcasts the music out into the yard better that way. Functionally, is better as a patio station, but you can put the remote control here in a more convenient location, say at light switch height as you walk outside the patio door. When this would be installed, you would have a wall housing or a rough-in that would go in during construction of the house. And then once the exterior of the house is finished, the speaker grill attaches to the rough-in. And as for the remote control, this was designed to mount on a standard two-gang electrical box, which would be put in during construction and the wires would be run into the box, and then this would be mounted onto the box when the exterior of the house was finished also. Placement of these was a consideration because if you mount these two items too far apart from each other, they won't work very well as an intercom station because if this is six or seven feet away from the speaker and you want to try to use it as an intercom, you have to be here to operate the controls, but you would have to shout six feet over to t into the speaker and that's not gonna work very well. So in a lot of applications, the control would be mounted on the wall down below the speaker because it was more convenient from an operational point of view. So in 1961, if you were installing an N2561 system, you would buy this set. This set would be a model 2574 and it came prepackaged with the wall control and the outdoor eight inch patio station as sort of a kit that you would get. And as time marched on and more and more solid state systems were designed and introduced, there were more and more kits available because there were differences between how each system worked and what type of control it would have and actually what type of speaker it would use. So there were different kits. Let me show you how that works. So here we have the kit. It would be kit number 2574 for a model N2561. But let's say you were installing a somewhat less expensive system. Perhaps you were putting in a Newtone model 2090. Well, the kit for a 2090, you wouldn't have that. You would have this. This is the wall control assembly that works with a Newtone model 2090. Now let's say maybe you were doing a little bit better and you were going to install a Newtone model 2540. Well, the 2540 would have a wall control like this. Now, this one is missing the bezel around it because I don't have bezels for everything, but it, this is the control insert and it would fit into a frame just like this one, so it could be mounted on the wall. Let's say that you were installing a Newtone Model 2071, which was a stereo music intercom system. Then the kit would include the in control insert in its bezel like this. This is the control assembly for a 2071. You have a talk button, but you have dual volume controls because it's stereo, so it's right and left channel adjustment. Let's say you were installing a Newtone model 2500 stereo system, which is later on, but the same idea. Here's the control insert for this. Each one of these was sold as a kit. If you were doing a 2540, the kit number was a 2557. If you were doing the 2071 system, it would be a kit model 2084. If you were doing the 2090, it would be a kit number 2017, and so forth. So there were different kits for each different model of Newtone intercom system that you would buy, and every kit came with a wall control and a patio station, a wide variety of different wall controls, and there were also a different selection of speakers that came with them because each system had its own fundamental requirement as to what the speaker behind the grill had to be. There were several different patio speaker stations that were made for different applications based on which system it was going to be used with. If you were installing a Newtone 2561 
or you were installing a Newtone 2540, or you were installing a Newtone 2500 stereo system, your patio station in its kit with its correct remote control would include one of these. This is a 45 ohm, eight inch Newtone speaker cone meant for outdoor use. And that the 45 ohms was the impedance of the speaker cones for all of those systems. If you were installing a Newtone 2071 or 2090, or a 2064, you would have one of these. This is an eight inch Newtone 3.2 ohm speaker cone because that's the impedance of speaker cone that Newtone uses on all of those systems. You can see from a manufacturing point of view, it was a better and easier choice because you have one grill assembly that's used for everything. You just put different speaker cones on the back of it for different applications. The biggest problem with outdoor patio stations are that they're outdoors and equipment that's outdoors is outside in the sun and the wind and the rain and the bugs and the snow. They have a really, really hard life. When the patio remote controls are installed, back in those days, in the earliest days, these didn't seal very well against the walls, especially if you had stucco on the outside of your house, which is kind of a rough texture, or if you had some type of siding with vertical grooves in it, the grooves would leave little spots. And then if it got rained on, it would get down inside and eventually it would ruin the controls on the back of the station and then these wouldn't work very well. There was some modest attempt on a lot of these to make them somewhat weatherproof. The control for the 2574 station, it had this big rubber gasket wrapped around the controls, but even at that, after sometimes 20 years, they would still get wet and the controls rust and then they don't work properly. There was an option for a short amount of time with this control, if you couldn't do a recess mount and make it flush into the wall, they did offer this. This was a cast aluminum wall housing. It's a surface mount housing. This would sit against the face of the wall and then the control could sit in it like this. It has this nice angular shape to it to help keep the rain off the controls. But I don't think this was very popular because in the more than 30 years I've been doing this, this is the only one that I've ever seen. And I have a feeling it was probably kind of expensive. Most of the time, these type of controls, they were just screwed to the electrical box that was in the wall. I don't think back in those days they had caulking so much. I don't know how, what they sealed them up with or if they sealed them up at all. But usually these have pretty hard lives. Because the life expectancy of these type of controls was short if they were installed like this in a flush mount application. Starting in the mid 1960s, 60s that they did come up with a newer idea which was this. This is a surface mount patio control box and what we have here are several pieces. This is a model IA19. They have different model numbers based on when they were made. Here we have a brown plastic surface mount box. This would mount to the surface of the wall like this. There's a little hole right here where the wires come through. It includes a metal mounting plate that can be attached to the, an electrical box that was put in the wall during construction. There's places for little screws. And then you have this front assembly here and the front assembly is actually a door that opens up. And you have the bezel here and the bezel is important because if you remember, like I showed you this one, this is the control insert for a model 2540 or the patio kit would be a model 2557. This one is missing its flush mount bezel. However, that's not a problem because if we're gonna do a surface mount application, all we have to do is take the control insert and tip it in to the back of the door assembly. And now it's an outdoor station. The door assembly takes the place of the original bezel and then this mounts like this it wouldn't fall out though, because there would be a screw that would hold it in place. It would be like this. And when you're not using it, you can snap the door closed to keep the rain off of it. And then when you want to adjust it, you would open it up, use the intercom or make a volume adjustment, and then you could close it back up. This type of assembly was a new idea and it was reasonably popular. The biggest problem with these were always that if you opened and closed them a lot, the molded plastic hinge here would eventually tear. 
and the quality of the plastic could have been better. Maybe in those days it was the best they had, but eventually the plastic gets kind of brittle and it kind of falls apart and usually the doors are missing at this point. And then you would just have the control insert kind of exposed. It was a good attempt at making it better and it was certainly, I think, less expensive than this big chunky aluminum thing like this. As for the speaker stations themselves, these are a very good design. This basic grill design that you see here, which was introduced in 1961, was actually in use on all 8-inch Newtone patio stations all the way through the end of 2010. They got their money's worth out of the design, certainly. These are an aluminum grill, and the very early ones, the finish was brushed aluminum, and then sometime in the late 1960s or early 1970s, they went with this anodized aluminum finish on the grill, which made it hold up better. The brushed aluminum ones tend to get pitted as they get old, but I'll do another video that shows you how to deal with that. And as for the speakers that went on the back of the grills, here we have an 8-inch Newtone 3.2 ohm speaker cone with the little wizard cone in the middle. Outdoor speaker cones in those days, they weren't treated in any ways for outdoor use. They were actually the same speaker cones as what was used on inside stations, which means that they had sometimes a relatively short life. It depends a lot on what direction they face. If they face west or south, sometimes they have a shorter life from the heat of the sun. Or if they're in an area where there's a lot of wind and rain and it makes its way through the little perforations in the grill, over time it takes its toll on the speaker cone and eventually they rot away and fail. It wasn't really until you get into the mid-1970s that you start to see other choices for outdoor speaker cones. The one thing that all of these items have in common, other than they're all meant for outdoor use, is they're becoming increasingly difficult to find replacement parts for. Outdoor surface mount enclosures are harder and harder to find. The ones with the doors I haven't seen any to pick up probably in the last four or five years. Outdoor remote control assemblies also becoming harder and harder to find. However, indoor remote controls are not that difficult to find sometimes. With a little bit of effort, indoor control assemblies can be modified and converted to for outdoor use and that works well. Of course, if you don't have an enclosure to put it in, that can be a problem. The bezels that fit around the controls for flush mount applications, they're very difficult to find because if there were any extra ones left over from an installation, it's not something most people would have kept. They would have been tossed away. So that can be a problem. The original 57 through 1960 entry door stations that can also double as a patio station, they come along occasionally. We have some, but they're not that plentiful anymore. When they fail from being outside after 40 or 50 years, they're usually in pretty rough shape. Fortunately, the aluminum grills for the patio speaker station part of this kit. They can be refinished and made to look like new again. And replacement speaker cones, not too terribly difficult to find. The 45 ohm speaker cones are the easiest ones usually to come up with. Systems that use 3.2 ohm speaker cones were more moderately priced systems. So most moderately priced systems didn't have a lot of eight inch inside speakers. There's less of these available. However, they do come along occasionally. And of course, any of these can be used from inside stations if they're treated for outdoor use to help protect them and make them last longer. You certainly wouldn't want to take a bare speaker cone like this and put it outside. You'd want to treat it with the wet look first to seal it up and make it last as long as you can. So there is some hope if you have this type of equipment in your house and you need to get it working again. That's the ins and outs of early Newtone outdoor patio speaker stations. I am going to do a part two to this video and we'll talk about outdoor patio speaker stations from 1975 through the end of 2010. And they're a completely different animal. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification 
and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.